what three words? What is it? Uh, so what three words is a global address system. Uh, we've divided the whole world into three meter by three meter squares. There's 57 trillion three meter squares in the world. And we have named each one with three words from the dictionary. So something like table, chair, spoon is the name of one square, coffee, branch, pyramid, so on and so on around the whole world. You've got enough combinations of three words. Um, very simple way to talk about everywhere. <laughs> And I think, obviously, I think it's quite clear that what three words and Nano share a very similar ethos of fixing a real world problem. I know what three words is fixing the, uh, the global address issue that we see around today. So can you walk us through kind of what inspired you to create what three words? Um, sure. So I, I used to work in the music business, not tech. Uh, and my job was to just get people to arrive at a gig. Um, normally the back entrance from somewhere or some sort of long winding road in the middle of Wales. Um, and I was known as the latitude longitude guy because I tried to impose the use of latitude and longitude onto the London music business. I said, all you've got to do is type in this eight digit latitude, eight digit longitude, and you'll show up at the exact back entrance of Wembley Stadium, uh, which was a perfect solution, uh, except no musicians uh, want to use latitude and longitude, which is what I hadn't really banked, banked on. Um, um, for no other reason than it's just a bit complicated. There's a space bar. No one knows where the, the space goes and the plus and minus and the degrees button. Um, and so the whole idea was we've got an amazing system here, um, but it's just quite hard. It's been around for decades, but no one uses it, which is latitude, longitude. So the idea was if you can simplify that, um, maybe we can get this into mainstream use rather than using postcodes or street addresses, which are very vague and inaccurate. So that was kind of where, where the idea came from. Nice. And I think, I think, again, kind of showing the same ethos, it's around 2 billion people don't have an address in the world. Yep, still many, many, many people um, definitely runs well into the billions um, who don't have an address. You think about so much of India, a lot of Africa, a lot of um, South America, all, all sorts of countries where um, in many cities they're just rapidly expanding. The very last thing the government thinks about doing is going, let's name this street. Um, and there, there's just plenty of places in the world where that is the case and people just have no way of identifying where they live. Um, and so it is also a really, really useful system for many places. Uh, for example, Mongolia, somewhere what is very popular. Um, very big country, not many people, um, but you can you can post a letter even to just the three words in Mongolia and it will arrive, uh, which is really, really good. And I definitely recommend, honestly, if you are sitting and lying in bed, which I know that me and my old housemates used to do, we'd always look up our what three words and uh, always know where your what three words are. So what has been your biggest challenge? I know that what three words has been around for, for quite a few years now. What's been the big, biggest challenge over your tenure so far? So... The, the actual idea and product of what three words has not really changed much since the nine years ago when we invented it. Um, and basically the biggest challenge is adoption, which is not dissimilar to something like Nano. Um, because you've, you've got an idea and the only difference today when what three words is really pretty well known around the UK and back then is just more people knowing about it and using it, um, that's it. And when we came onto the scene with this idea, most people kind of like, that's an interesting, quirky idea, but you know, call us back or good luck, um, and kind of thought nothing of it. And you have to sort of plow and plow away to get adoption of your system. Um, e even though you're not, many people think of tech companies, you're thinking of always building new features, new products to try and get it worked. It's not the same for us. We've always had this one pretty static product. You just need to get more people using it, but then you also need to get more businesses or products using it. And so you've kind of got the, the two sides of the ecosystem. You have to keep stimulating. Um, it turns out it does take quite a few years to get that to work. So it sounds incredibly familiar. I'm not going to lie to you on that front. I think, Nano, we are in the same battle as well. So, Chris, what was your kind of aha moment with What Three Words when it kind of burst onto the scene? I know that we are still kind of waiting for ours with Nano, but What Three Words had, I mean, that's how I found What Three Words all those years ago. Can you describe us that moment? Yeah, so in, in the UK, we, we had been going, this is probably about five, six years into the journey, um, and you know, we had a pool of enthusiastic users. But we started to get used by police, fire, and ambulance services around the country, the first few. And they kind of learned about it in a very odd way. Um, we were actually featured as a storyline on NCIS, the US TV show, um, which was very cool, didn't know about it. And then there was a guy from the Norfolk Police Service who watched that episode and thought, ah, 
this would be really useful technology for fly tipping uh, in, in rural Norfolk. Um, and then the Norfolk Police Service became our sort of evangelist. And then as soon as you do something in Norfolk, Suffolk get very jealous. And the Suffolk Police Service started using it. And so uh, around and around the UK, there's about 120 emergency services. We now have 85% who use us. But the big moment for us was when the BBC ran an article, I think in 2019, which basically said, download this app, yep. it will save your life. And not many in the things in this world go truly viral, like you, you try and it doesn't happen, but that article really did. And so many people read it and they knew that they could use it to get help with a heart attack or anything like that. And that was a big moment where our adoption in the UK just went vumph. And I think you had 2 million downloads that day. Yeah, you? exactly. It was it was it's the space of 24, 48 hours. Colossal number. I mean, that's whatever, whatever it is, a, a significant chunk of the sort of app owning population. It's mad. Yeah. I mean, incredible. And I know you just mentioned kind of partnerships and kind of with Nano, we share the same battle, which is how to get something that is so useful, but not the most exciting in a way. You know, Nano money addresses, it's, it doesn't, you know, it's useful, it fixes the real world problem, but you guys have managed to turn what three words into a cool brand. And you have partnerships with the most amazing companies, but also you are collecting car manufacturing partnerships at the moment. I think Land Rover, Jaguar in the last couple of months, Subaru in the last couple of months as well. How do you go about kind of creating those partnerships and making those connections? So one of the things that I think I learned from doing this, so a lot of the startup ethos is, you know, when you're starting out, start small and then grow um, with who you want to partner with. And it's somewhat of the time that is true. But also, um, actually, it can also, the opposite can work in your favor. So with us, the first car navigation system that we got into was Mercedes-Benz, which is basically seen as the kind of pinnacle of luxury and, and you know, make a lot of cars. It's, it would have been the ideal one for us. And actually, what these big companies want is they want to be cool doing new stuff. And for them, that matters a lot. And so what we get is credibility from a big and established company. What they get is novelty and, and coolness from working with us. Um, and so actually, I guess what I've learned is if you, if you aim really high for that, you can be successful as a startup. Um, and so Mercedes-Benz was the first one to put us in. We're now up to 17 car navigation systems. Some of the hardest ones for us to get into are actually the coolest car companies because yeah. they're so cool and different enough. They don't necessarily, they're not interested in more cool and different partnerships. <laughs> so actually going for the kind of old, old guards can be your kind of secret way in as a startup. Um, and that's how that one's worked out. Nice. And I know that you have kind of taken, as every startup has to do, slightly out of the box routes when it comes to gaining those partnerships, whether it's through various billboards that are placed in certain places. I know that you've got a, a quite a hilarious story around placing a billboard in a place for a particular person. Do you mind running us through a little bit around that very briefly? Yeah, I mean, um, ad adoption is as much of a difficulty uh, for B2B as it is uh, for B2C when you're ta uh, targeting your businesses. Um, and so whilst we do really large scale advertising to the whole country, you might have seen this on TV um, in the UK, um, when we go into new countries, you don't necessarily have the budget to run TV advertising, which is incredibly expensive. So if you want to just target businesses, um, then we go in with very local localized advertising. We will put up billboards on the equivalent of, I don't know, the, the places around here if their office is around the back um, and you know hu human psychology is a funny old thing you can even walk into the meeting tell somebody that you've just placed a billboard outside their office to try and persuade them um, to work with you and they'll even just sort of nod away and go aha uh -huh, and then work with you so um, it's uh, it, I remember yeah in, in Korea I think was the one I mentioned to you where yes we sort of ran all this stuff and then funnily enough three months later the guy kind of emailed and was like, I've been thinking about what three words. And we were like, have you? Um, <laughs> having having sort of surrounded their entire office area with with our branding. Um, but it, it's just something where you need a head start yeah. to, to get to get noticed by the people that you want to get noticed in a new country. Um, all, all sorts of advertising can be effective. Nice. And I know that obviously, Chris, you have been an entrepreneur over these last kind of nine years. Um, and I know we'll get into kind of the, your, your interest in crypto in a second. But and I'm slightly putting you on the spot here, I'm sorry, but if you had to kind of impart some kind of wisdom or kind of your biggest challenges of being a, a co-founder and being an entrepreneur during those nine years with What Three Words, which has such a, a clear goal and a clear you know, possibility and fixing a real world problem, how have you, have you gone about that? Um, I, I think the, the biggest challenge for us would have been um, 
trying to seek out where you get that adoption. And there's a, there's this kind of balance between running after everything that somebody suggests you do. You know, someone always says, to, you know, dresses are terrible in Ecuador. My, you know, cousins in the government, you must come and meet them. And, and you get on the plane to Ecuador and, and off you go and you chase all these new opportunities. I'm sure it's the same for you guys in Nano. Someone <laughs> says, someone might be interested over here and you kind of go and do all of this. And a bunch of these don't work out. Yeah. And that's very bandwidth sapping when you're on short on cash, short on time. Um, to go chasing all of these. Um, but I guess back to, to what I was saying earlier, also just aiming high, yeah. because if you get that Mercedes-Benz kind of one, or I think our, our first um, delivery companies in the UK were actually DHL, DPD, um, the really big ones, more so than the smaller ones. So you've just got to balance that kind of spreading yourself thin by too thin, um, but also the PR value yeah. that you get from those early use cases where you get, I'm, I'm, I know you guys have a lot of consumers, but you're really looking for those businesses to accept. For us, the first major business was the Mongolian Postal Service. Very small, turns out amazing for PR yeah. <laughs> um, because you get these kind of um, stories of nomadic people and, and, and things which capture imagination um, was, was one of those golden moments for us, just like emergency services. So you just got to stick with it. Um, yeah. And, and you'll figure it out. And be resilient, I yes. think. <laughs> that is the key factor. So Chris, you've been dabbling in crypto for a little while now and doing a lot of research. Um, and I know, obviously, Chris being here is a nano fan. Um, Chris, can you tell us a little bit around kind of how you got into crypto and why and, and what, you're, what you've taken away from the research that you've done um, over the last kind of year or so? Yeah, so I, I got into it and I was having a look at all of the different... Um, cryptocurrencies available and I guess when I sort of stumbled on Nano um, you know you guys have done well in publicity there's a lot of good stuff online and the first thing I was doing was watching the interview with the founders which is a lot of the um, a lot of the way that people come and look at us as they look at our interviews and how we express it and I remember seeing talks with you and with Colin um, and for one thing um, just the very logical very sensible way that you're articulating it but then the properties of Nano itself it's feeless and it's instant I was just kind of looking at it going this seems like the, the ultimate way to, to build something if you want to get adoption. But what also interested me about it is that it's obviously, um, it was a lesser known brand name, but I just looked at it and thought, well, that's just us yeah. back in 2013. <laughs> and that's just us when people went, they've you know, mapped the world in three meters and three words and people were just like, well, you know, who cares because no one knows about it. But I know what can be done with years of just changing perception and probably the properties of Nano will look pretty similar in nine years time but it'll be really widely adopted. So I just thought it was really interesting and you know, we got in touch and, um, and wanted to be interested in the part of it at this stage of the journey because I know that human beings are fickle as soon yep. as that adoption comes. <laughs> everyone will go, of course, no, no, of course. It was always, it was inevitable. Didn't you know? <laughs> um, but but you, know, you just got to get through those initial hurdles. Yeah, and then that's exactly it. And I think you know, we're so grateful. We've got a wonderful kind of array of people that advise, help us, and have been through kind of a very similar journey. And obviously, you know, What Three Words has shares so many properties, I think, on the journey that we do with Nano. So what does What Three Words, what does the future hold for What Three Words coming up? I know that you guys are going through a crazy period at the moment, which is so exciting. Um, yeah, so for us at the moment, we, we think that the UK is in a pretty good place in terms of our adoption. People use us for all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff every day, which we love. Um, and we see that. But for us, um, we, we need to be a global standard. So we're taking on six countries at the moment, Korea, Japan, India, um, some of Southeast Asia, US, Germany. Um, and doing all those things in parallel is tough when you've sort of been used to focusing your efforts on one country. Um, but a lot of that is then flying around the world into, into these places to, to um, to, to get exactly the same thing kickstarted. But you know, you hope that this time around you make less mistakes, you kind of know what you're doing. Everything's a bit harder. Most of those countries speak different languages to English. Um, but you just everything's incrementally harder yeah. when it's not another country. Um, but for us, it's just a case of focus. Great that COVID lets us travel now to a lot of those countries. Um, and get what three words as well adopted there as we are here. Awesome. I think you guys had something pretty amazing happen to you recently, which was what three words were included on the new 50p, the Alan Turing dedicated 50p coin. Um, and what three words were embedded? Yeah, that's right. There. That was fairly unexpected. Uh, Britain's most famous uh, code breaker yep. and somehow being associated with him. If you if you do see that new 50p, there are three words. Well, there's a whole bunch of letters, but you can make out the three words where the three meter square. I think he studied maths at Cambridge, that's which so is cool. kind of cool.
the marine people grew up using latitude and longitude. In fact, they were the kind of um, the people who, who were most happy with it. Um, but we have moved into the kind of um, the boating apps, the marine apps, this kind of thing. Um, and what works works offline, so you don't need a data connection to run it. So if it's on your phone, you can still type in the three words regardless, because you, all you need is a satellite from the sky. The dream. Um, yeah, so it is um, It is used. There's just not that many people who are mariners. So um, it's definitely an enthusiastic community, but um, it's, it's, it's something which is there, but, but we can only dedicate a certain amount of time to it. It has, um, and a lot of these, um, for a start, we, we charge for the use of our API, which is how businesses integrate, and for anything to do with emergency services or humanitarian, we have a blanket policy, which is we don't charge. So a lot of NGOs have built us into their apps, their processes, um, all sorts of things from like South Africa, where there are um, one part of South Africa where pregnant women have to call when they want to get an ambulance to the hospital. But like we were saying earlier, they don't have addresses. What through words is a really important part of something called Gateway Health Initiative there. Um, and there are many uh, NGOs using it for similar kind of things. I know in the recent Afghanistan evacuations, um, the US um, was heavily involved and suddenly something came up on Twitter that what through words was I think the sort of the system being used to locate people um, and and that was just kind of very very fast moving and we're, we're known a lot about in those circles so um, but yes we always make our tech free for those kind of use cases so that that would never be a barrier to being able to be used. Thank you. One of the reasons why we love what three words. Uh, what three words is in 51 languages um, and we do include Chinese um, and Korean and Japanese. You have to make certain decisions. For example, in Japanese, we only use one of their three character sets um, for various reasons. There's, for example, we would remove words like here, H-E-R-E or H-E-A-R that you could spell uh, in two ways, but they sound the same. In Japanese, that gets very complicated if you use something called kanji, so we only use hiragana. Um, yeah, we use Cyrillic character sets. E each one of these things, they are kind of things that can break your code. For example, we thought, oh, you know, we'll never do a language where the words have spaces in the middle of the word. Who would have a space in the middle of the word? It turns out, Vietnamese, all words have spaces in the middle. And so it breaks everything, breaks everyone's integration, and then you have to redo it. Um, but now we kind of, I think, at 51 languages, we've got over most of the hurdles. Um, but it's certainly been an interesting process. But yeah, if you, if you go through our app, you can happily uh, explore some interesting languages and how we do it. Did you ever think that when you started What Three Words that you become a language guru that you have? <laughs> Not at all. We have these like lunch and learns in the office where our languages team go right introduction to Vietnamese and everybody's just kind of glued as to why it broke everything and how we solve it. And um, yeah, we all learned a lot. If you had to choose the hardest, I mean, obviously English is appalling when you think about actually, you know, how words have the same phonetical sound and various others. What's, I know English may be the worst though. What has been the worst, do you think? Um, do you think it's Vietnamese? Uh, uh, honestly, uh, not Vietnamese. It, it's actually French. Um, Is be, it? Because French has too many words that sound identical. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it was one of the ones which broke us the most. Um, but <laughs> uh, but it, does, it does work. It was just one of the hardest ones to figure out a solution for. I can imagine. We came up with the idea nine years ago, and uh, there a lot of people ask us, what are you going to do about height? And the answer to that is we don't do height. We, we just do a two-dimensional system. A lot of people want to make the square smaller, um, and it's a fair point. I think at the moment, phone GPS doesn't really get any better than three meters. So we just kind of think, given that most people are using a phone and that's not going to change anytime soon, we'll keep to the three meters. I think if suddenly accuracy became centimeter, we might think about it. But I think one of the tempting things is to complicate any system or new standard and add extra things on it. But what kind of worked for us was that it's just three meters, three words, anyone's mum, grandparents can, can wrap their heads around it. And optional extras, you start to then stray back into the world of coordinates or, or those kind of systems which are hard. So for now, I think we think simplicity wins and we may not change it, but it's not to say never. Do one thing and do it well, I think, yeah. which uh, <laughs> used to be our tagline at Nano, actually. I think it's probably the stuff I said earlier about aiming high and once you've got four or five really good opportunities of a business or well-known organization that you can PR that is going to kickstart adoption and interest, 
and just hone in on those. It's not, I don't think you have to start small. And I know that you know, George and the team are looking at really big headline stuff that would grab attention. Um, and then to just throw all the resource that you have. I mean, I think it is different for us as a private company. We had a lot of investment and we, we were able to really shove the marketing at it. Um, but some of our biggest successes have also come with our smaller budgets. Um, our, our best TV ad cost 10% of what our second best TV ad cost to make. Um, and you, you can be ultra resourceful with, with less. So I'm, I'm sure there'll be a way. I think it's, I know what it's like when you, you can't just, you can't just target an organization. There's then a company which works in the middle and they've got yeah. a sense off between here and here. And then you go, oh God, we've got to now talk to the guys in the middle. Um, and sometimes in, in the world of car navigation, you have four different companies that you've got to, you've got to sell to all of them before one of them will integrate what three words. So it is hard, but focus with a helpful dose of optimism. I'm sure that, that golden use case and PR opportunity will come. Mm -hmm.